Good morning and welcome to Let's Talk Dementia live on Facebook. I'm glad that you've tuned in. Whether you're watching this live right here at 8.15 Eastern Standard Time or maybe you're watching it later in the day on Facebook or on our website, letstalkdementia.org or maybe you're seeing it on YouTube, our YouTube channel, Let's Talk Dementia. Wherever. I'm glad that you're here. I was running a little bit behind because I realized I had not put on lipstick and I was afraid that if I didn't put it on, you guys might watch this and think I was dead or presently dying and call 911. My dad used to tell my mama, put on lipstick, Vera. If you don't, somebody's going to try to embalm you. <laughs> it's a bad look. We would like to thank our sponsors for Let's Talk Dementia live on Facebook, and that would be Beth Crosby, Editor Beth. You can find her at EditorBeth.com. If you are writing a book, a manuscript, an article, or working on your website, you need her eyeballs on it, so you can write her at edit Beth at EditorBeth.com. And then Life in the Carolinas, the Telly Award winning winning Emmy nominated television show about what it's like to live in North and South Carolinas and you can find them at www.lifeinthecarolinas.com and on YouTube and then HD Imports you can go there for the repair of your Honda Hyundai Acura Toyota or Kia and you'll be glad you did I had the wonderful opportunity last night to sit down with a friend who bought my dinner that didn't hurt my feelings any either so Terry thank you for that and she said I'm just waiting till my Toyota needs something I'm gonna take it over there that place that you talk about she's gonna be glad she did and so are you if you are interested in being a, a sponsor for this show or for our podcast that's in 73 countries, we use that money to help finance the ministries that we have and would love to talk with you about that no matter where you are. We have viewers of this show in four countries, so you can be anywhere and reach folks, and we sure would love to have your support. So you can write me, carol at letstalkdementia.org. Well, I got to tell you what happened yesterday. I got on the plane yesterday morning to fly home because the show you saw yesterday was pre-recorded. Got on the plane to fly home. And I swear that whole flight, we did this back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, what is going on? There was no bad weather. It was clear as a bell. But bang, bang. And I don't really like to fly anyway. So I'm thinking, ooh, my belly was like, this is not real fun, but you know, it's okay. And the lady next to me had not been on airplane in 33 years. And every time it would do this, she'd go, whoa, whoa. And I thought, okay, that's not helping me any either. We were landing. I mean, like the landing gear has touched the dang ground. And I'm thinking, oh gosh. Then we started going up and down, up and down. I'm like, oh my belly is just not happy. And I thought, it's coming up. I'm going to puke right here. No, I can't do this. Not with the woman sitting beside me hadn't flown in 33 years and she ain't puking, right? <laughs> so I get that paper bag, which thankfully there was one in the seat pocket, and I hold it to me. And sure enough, I did a little bit. Not a lot. Not a lot. Not anything too embarrassing. But the man next to me goes, good gracious lady, you don't have but five more minutes on the plane. You couldn't have waited. Well, like if I could have waited, I would have. It was like I did it for the fun of it. You didn't need to know all that, did you? I don't like to fly, but alas, to do the work I do, I kind of have to fly some. Well, today I wanted to talk with you about salads. Do you like salads? I do like salads. People think if you eat salads, you'll lose weight. That is not true, because if you eat salads, unless you eat a true vegetable salad, which nobody I know does, then you're going to not have a whole lot of calories. Because let's see, we're going to put on our salad, we're going to put some lettuce on our salad, and we're going to put some cucumbers. We're thinking we're healthy. And we're going to put some tomatoes because that's good for you, some peppers. And then we're going to put what? Cheese and bacon bits and eggs and nuts, especially if we've put those nuts in the frying pan and caramelized them. See how salads, are, they're not so good for you. That's not what I'm going to talk to you about today. But see my salad spoons? Salad forks. <laughs> Somebody really should buy me a new pair. They're pitiful, aren't they? They still work. So if you've got a big bowl of salad and you take your salad forks that aren't messed up and you dig down in there with the express intent of pulling up nuts and cheddar cheese, how likely are you to do it? Especially with mine. It's going to be very hard to do. You can't just reach down there and get just one thing. You reach down in there and you get a scoop of salad to put on your plate. 
Well, what I want to talk to you about today is word salad. Now, word salad's going on in the brain of your loved one with dementia. Um, and it's a good term that I believe Tipa Snow came up with. And, and it does explain how the words are just so jumbled up in the brain. So that when your loved one with um, mid-stage to late-stage Alzheimer's is trying to get their words together. They want to tell you something and they can't get their words together. What it's like is they are reaching down into that pool of words in their brain and they're trying to pull up a word or two words. And it's like reaching down in that salad bowl and they can't get just that word. They get all kinds of other words. And so it comes out totally wrong. And we hear things like, I need my pedurdle. Well, you don't know what a pedurdal is, and of course, neither do they either, but you've got to discern with questions what it is they're talking about because they've reached in and tried to get the word, but they got something else. They got tomatoes when they wanted cucumbers. They got this word when they wanted that word, or they didn't get a word at all. Now they're making up a word. So what do you do? You can say, I don't know what a pedurdal is, and you don't either, so you don't need one. You can do that, but as Dr. Phil would say, how's that working for you? Not too good. It's not going to make them go, I love you so much for being kind and considerate and gracious to me when I'm confused and can't find my words. <laughs> That's not going to work. So what you want to say is, gosh, yeah, you do need your pedurdal. Now, I forgot what color is your pedurdal. Hopefully a pedurdal has color. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. And so they'll say, it's black. Okay, it's black. You start thinking black, and they're they're going. Now, what is? Tell me again. How do you use your pedurdal? Because you might use yours different than what I do, and they may start telling you. I put it. It it goes. It it, it goes. Um, it, it goes here, un, 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 under 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 arm. It's black. It goes here under the arm. What are they talking about? No, they're talking about their purse. So you might, with the right questions, quickly figure out what a pedurdal is. And then you can go, ah, oh, your pedurdal, it's in the front closet. We put it there yesterday. Let me go get it for you. So now we have worked through that word salad issue by just asking the right questions, leading them down a different path. Now, it may not go that quickly. You may have to ask 57 questions, and you may never figure out what the pedurdal is. But you can always tell them, we're going to work on that. We've got to absolutely find your pedurdal, but we really do need to eat breakfast before your eggs get cold. Can we, can we do it after we eat breakfast? And then if you're introducing a new thought to them, you get past it. Now, what happens in the brain with words? Uh, words are processed in lots of parts of the brain, but the left temporal lobe is where language is stored and we lose it. We lose the ability to grasp a word and a noun and a verb. We can't do that anymore and get our thoughts together. That part of the brain is highly damaged with Alzheimer's. But the right temporal lobe is where rhythm is and it remains and we can grasp that information. So if you're talking to your loved one and you feel like they're not understanding you because you're just talking to them and their brain's not processing words, then sing to them what it is you want them to say or want them to understand. So you might say, Mama, today we're going to Walmart. Because now we've sparked that part of the brain that's more intact, which is the right temporal lobe. Even at the lat end stages of advanced Alzheimer's, the right temporal lobe where rhythm and prayer and poetry and art and dancing, the artsy-fartsy stuff, it is more intact than the left temporal lobe where language is. So saying something to someone who has Alzheimer's will not spark the brain like singing it to them. So if it's important, try singing it to them. It's kind of neat. It works. And potentially, they might sing it back. I have a client that when she sings a question to her husband, he sings back the answer. It works for them. So word salad is an interesting way of life and how it affects life when you're working with someone who cannot get their words together to say what they want. And that's when, as I've told you before, my sweet mama would use that word and she would go, oh shit, I don't know. <laughs> and it just made us laugh. But remember, dirty words, what we consider dirty words, 
are more readily accessible in the brain of someone with Alzheimer's. They are on the outer reaches of the brain and the outer reaches of the brain are more intact than the inner part of the brain, even in the very last days. That's where the old memories are. Remember how we talked about going back um, in time and you wanna go home, you wanna go see mama because mama's in the outer reaches of the brain? Well, that's where dirty words are too. So when we forget, how to tell you I love you or I need to go to the bathroom or pass the salt but we can say shit left and right and a whole bunch of other words too that was mama said that one in hell which she politely told me you know hell was not a dirty word <laughs> gospel according to Vera you gotta go with it well I hope that explains to you a little bit or gives you some thoughts anyway on how to process word salad in your loved one and I do hope that your salad forks look better than mine. I've had these forever. Ann Hardy bought these for me, and I've used them a lot. I want to thank our sponsors, um, HD Imports on Flint Street Extension, 803-985-0985, Life in the Carolinas at lifeinthecarolinas.com, and on YouTube, and Editor Beth at editorbeth.com. Check her out. In fact, she is messaging me right now because I got to make an appointment to talk to that girl. I got some thoughts in my brain. She's got to figure out what they mean. Poor child. I hope you have a good day. I hope your caregiving journey is a pleasant one. I hope something happens today that makes you stop and think, you know, God is so good. He is so good to us, even in the face of, face of dementia, even in the face of stress and the unknown, you see God's hand. It's there. Sometimes you don't have to look for it. Sometimes it's just like, whoa, baby, that was cool. But there are many days you got to stop and you got to seek it because it's there. Blessings and smiles. I'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to talk about mass confusion. Oh, we all know about that. I'm going to tell you what it feels like to have dementia and be massively confused. Bye, y'all.